Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd habita fillah from the immense fawaid and benefits that we get educational benefits from the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Arba'in Anawi that were deduced from Musnid al-Qahtani as we mentioned prior to this listen to this we're going to be brief and fantastic excellent benefits that we can apply in our lives. An Abi Huraira ta radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam min husn islam al-mar'i tarkuhu ma la ya'ni Hadith Hassan ruahu Tirmidhi wa Ibn Majah In this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the hadith of Abi Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he said that I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying or that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said from the excellent uh, Islam of, of the Muslim is leaving that which does not concern him. And this is in Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah as we mentioned. It's very important for the believer to concern themselves with those things that are going to get them to Jannah and those things which are important in the dunya that will benefit them in this life and or as well as the hereafter. But not to involve yourself in every type of fitna and every type of wasted amount of time and energy. And I want to mention, take this time to mention, because often we find, I find many posts, people are still talking about things we talked about over a year ago or what have you, but you said about hajuri, for example, or giving me new fuad or hajuri repented or whatever the case may be. These things, for me, have very little uh, benefit in relation to my religion and what I'm trying to do and practice and come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, people mention stuff about Salafi publications or Green Lane Masjid and stuff. I, those things, I'm far from. I've never been to any of those places. Allahu alam if I ever will be because I live in America. I live in Saudi Arabia and will go back to America eventually. I'll probably spend my time in America and Canada and those places. And so... With that being the case, those things are less of less importance to me. And especially with everyone, people getting so involved in those things and not focusing on themselves. Let's listen to the tarbiyah, the educational benefits that are derived from this hadith. The first benefit is that husn islam al yani kamal imanahu wa quwwata ikhlasuhu wa tawheeduhu wa muwafiqatuhu hadith Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that the when it is ref when it is referred to as husn islam a uh, muslim the excellent uh, or superior islam of the muslim this is in reference to the uh, perfection of it so it doesn't mean just that a person it doesn't mean that a person who doesn't who does involve themselves in their affairs is not a muslim no but the one who's on another level who is, is focusing on those things which concern them. Because the Prophet Sallallahu said, Min husni islam al-mar'i. He said, from the great, uh, the superiority of the Islam of a believer. Okay, that this is showing that this is the person who is focusing on the higher things. Those things which are going to increase their iman. And that this is from superior levels of iman. Strength in their sincerity, their ikhlas, lillah, in their ibadah, illallah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa tawheeduhu, and his, his exalting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his monotheism. And his superiority, his or her superiority, in, in uh, uh, doing those things and worshipping in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet and the guidance of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another benefit of this hadith, hath. الحث على استكمال شعب الإيمان وتحقيق استجابة لله ولرسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم فليس كل مسلم حسن الإسلام ولكن حسن الإسلام المرئي مرتبة زائدة ينبغي الحصول عليها والسعي لوصول إليها. so that this hadith also illustrates for us the importance of and 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 it's an encouragement for us to complete. Uh, our iman, to take our iman to another level, and to actualize doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has requested of us, and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have uh, ordered us to do, and that is not for every Muslim, 
Meaning, every Muslim should be doing that, but every Muslim does not do that. You know, many of us, we involve ourselves, immerse ourselves with sins. We immerse ourselves with disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are not striving actively to uh, necessarily perfect our Islam, but rather maintain a certain status quo. Some people, they just say it's sufficient, I'm a Muslim, and they just do everything uh, non-Muslims do, you know, that are from the things that are impermissible, like not covering, like... Uh, indulging in riba and other kind of major sins, but they still love Islam and they still adhere to Islam to the ex to a greater or lesser extent. And everyone uh, ahli iman mutafawat they have different levels. And so he said that the from husn Islam al Mar'i this is another level, this is the increased level as we mentioned, and that we should strive for it. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us that the Sharia. Uh, encourages us to uh, that the Muslim to build his or herself and be away from those things which do not benefit him, do not concern him. Uh, and this is a way of protecting and preserving your religion, your dunya as well, your worldly status, and your heart and your limbs. So when you involve yourself in things that don't concern you, that it shouldn't be important to you, you actually end up can, can end up hurting your own honor, hurting your own, uh, belittling your iman, belittling your deen, and hurting and harming your heart because you've, you've attached your heart to something that's not going to benefit you in this life, wala fil akhirah, not even in the hereafter. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us the importance that a Muslim should be these, themselves uh, with that which is uh, that they're responsible for, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made as a duty for them, and that Allah on the day of judgment will ask him about those things which are duties. They won't ask them about those things which do not concern them, about whether so-and-so was off it or so-and-so or a sister so-and-so, was she on the sunnah or not? Well, you're not going to be asked about those things. Did you listen to a lecture of so-and-so? Did you go to masjid so-and-so? You won't be asked about those things, but you're going to be asked about those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded you, like your prayer and those uh, your zakat and your, your, your fasting and your uh, ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and did you follow the commandments of Allah? Did you follow the sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? But you won't be asked about those other things which we involve ourselves in way too much and uh also that the mu'min concerns his or her himself with those things which are going to benefit them and those things which strengthen their iman and being away from those things which decrease their iman another benefit of this hadith is that one of the ways the shaitan enters upon a person is involving them with those other issues which are not important. So that's one of the ways the shaitan, think about it. Whenever you get involved and you say, huh, I wonder is so-and-so a mubtadiya? We're not talking about someone who's purely a mubtadiya that you should stay away from or whatever. But if you involve yourself in things that have no concern, you don't even speak the language of the mubtadiya in that country, but you're busy actively promoting ref refutations on them and you don't know the pillars of Salat. You don't know Arkan al-Islam properly. You don't know, you know, your basic duties, but you're involving yourself with higher duties which really don't concern you. So if you're doing this, this is a way for the shaitan to get to you and later what? The shaitan can either make you go away from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu or make you a disbeliever or make you fall into any kind of sins because you didn't Focus on the uh, uh, Oluwiyat, those important issues, the most important issues, uh, and you didn't uh, seek knowledge in stages, and you didn't practice your religious religion in stages, in 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 in, in trying to revive and trying to increase your iman. Another benefit of this hadith is that this hadith shows us that the thing which should not concern a, a Muslim is those things which do not benefit him in his religion or in his dunya. So that's what it means. Mala yani al Muslim. Mala yani al Muslim. Those things which don't concern a Muslim are those things which have no benefit for him in his deen and have no benefit for him in his dunya. And so be careful of those kind of issues. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us. 
that what is not included in those in those things in this hadith, meaning those things which layani that don't concern you, is giving dawah. Now we could let everyone just be in the same set and not talk about sins. Don't do this. No, but that's not that's not you, dawah is not included in that. Dawah you must tell people and invite them to khair and invite them to to better. So the du'a they have to when they're in the masajid. You know, tell people to stay away from certain sins and so and so on and so forth. So this is that's a duty that that does concern you, because that's from Amr bin Maruf and Nahi al-Munkar. Also, likewise, Amr bin Maruf and Nahi al-Munkar, uh, you know, commanding the good and forbidding the evil. That does not fall under that hadith. You know, you can't say, oh, hey, that doesn't concern you. I'm doing all these wicked sins out in public. No, you still have a duty to at least invite your brother to at least remind your sister. Sister, you, should, you shouldn't wear makeup. Sister, you shouldn't wear uh, uh, perfume. Sister, you should, you know, cover yourself properly. Uh, sister, you shouldn't act like a man or, and, and likewise, brother, you shouldn't act like a female. Uh, you know, you shouldn't have an earring. You shouldn't have your tattoos, you know. You, should, you know, commanding the good and forbidding the evil. This does not fall under that. Likewise, ta'awna la bir wa taqwa. And cooperation in good. Uh, this does not fall under this. Rather, those are duties and those are part of Iman and those are part of Islam. So they do concern the believer. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith also shows us the greatness and superiority of perfecting one's Islam and doing those things which a person, which concern a person, and, and being away from those things, which does not concern a person. Uh, and the Prophet Sallallahu said, إِذَا أَحْسَنَ أَحَدَكُمْ إِسْلَامُهُ فَكُلُّ حَسَنَ يَعْمَلَهَا يَكْتُبُ لُهُ عَشْرَ أَمْثَالِهَا إِلَى سَبْعَمِيَا ضَعْفِ وَكُلُّ سَيَّ يَعْمَلَهَا يَكْتُبُ لُهُ مِثْلَهَا so he mentioned the hadith and that this hadith uh, corresponds with this hadith we're studying and that the, the it shows the greatness and superiority of the Islam of a believer is mentioned also in another hadith where the Prophet Wasallam said from the greatness and superiority of, a, of one of you related to his Islam is that every good deed that he does that uh, will be written for him as ten, uh, ten, tenfold, or ten, as ten, up to seven hundred, uh, multiplied seven hundred times, and every evil that a person does, or similar to that, will be, uh, you know, will be written as it is as one until the person meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's very important, of course, that it encourages what to do those things which concern us, and that is good deeds and coming closer to Allah. Another benefit of this hadith is that this hadith uh, shows us that it is one, this hadith is one of those hadith that the ulama in the past, up until now, mentioned as one of, one of the greatest ahadith uh, uh, you know, that Islam is built upon. Some of the superior ahadith which mention the so many fawaid in Islam. And you'll find these hadith, this is why it's important if you can uh, to memorize what you can of Arba'in and Nawawi because it has uh, these ahadith. And one of the scholars mentioned, or one of the people mentioned a piece of poetry. He said, Umdat al-Din indana arba min kalam khayr al-bariya so he mentioned is a piece of poetry in Arabic, and forgive me for my uh, pronounce, pronouncing it, uh, you know, not giving it the proper uh, rhyming. But he said that the pillars of the deen to us is four from the statements of the superior uh, from mankind, meaning the Prophet Sallallahu So these are ahadith. He said, shubahat, which is one of the hadith in Arba'in and Noe, fear us, uh, avoiding doubtful matters. Wa'azhad, and another hadith, which the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned, being, having zuhud, you know, asceticism, not in, uh, you know, uh, you know, being satisfied with what you have and not being extravagant in wanting excess. You know, not being, not letting the dunya Consume your heart, and and leaving that which does not concern you, and that's the hadith we're studying now. And 
practicing in accordance, that deeds are in accordance with one's intention or, or, or doing your deeds in according with the proper intention. And that is the first hadith in the Ma'mal of Niyat, where the actions are tied to the intention. So those four ahadith, that the religion, uh, as many of the ulama mentioned, that the, the whole religion is built upon those things and those fawa'id in your good deeds. And that is very important for us that those hadith actualize and help us to improve our iman and help us to have success in this life as well as the hereafter and help us in our aqidah and our akhlaq and our manners and our using our time wisely and using our wealth wisely and in righteousness and using our intellect wisely and not involving ourselves in those things which do not concern us. We ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.